Let's do some theme music. Okay, today we are going to do some, um, we're going to connect up to Home Assistant. So I've got uh, got our dev uh, environment here. I've got our Home Assistant. I've added some lights and some switches, some plugs uh, that we can play with. And now we're going to go in here and we're going to add Home Assistant to our Node-RED. So the best way to do that is to go to the palette manager here. We're going to go install and then we're going to search for home assistant. Uh, and the one we want is the one called WebSocket. So uh, node red contrib home assistant WebSocket. Uh, that's uh, this is the one that's written by uh, his name is Kermit on the uh, HA Discord. Um, you should guys you should get to know him. If you have any questions about how it works, you should ask him. Because he's very knowledgeable and quite helpful. So we're going to install that. This takes a few minutes. And I will fast forward for this part. Oh, it's done. All right. So now, if we close this, we should be able to, over here, we will have a bunch of new palettes for a bunch of new nodes for Home Assistant. Uh, now, to set this up, we're going to need to set up uh, the, the Home Assistant instance. So we need to go in here and add a new server. So we're going to do that. And it's uh, it's on, ten, on this IP, and this port. And then we need to get a access token. So to do that, we go back to Home Assistant, and we go down to your username. And then you scroll down to the bottom here to long-lived access tokens. And we're going to create one. And we're going to call it node red. Oops, I can spell today. And then it's going to give you this long string. We're going to copy that. Click OK. You'll see it created it, node red. We're going to go back to node red. And we're going to paste this guy in here. And hit add. And now we've got, yeah, now we've got um, our instance. It's all set up and it looks like to be connecting. So now we can set up an entity ID here. Let's pull one of those switches. Let's see if it'll show up. Let's see if we can get that guy to show up. So once we hit deploy, we should see that it should say running there, and that means everything's good. Uh, it's connected to the home assistant, and it's watching the state of this switch. So if I go back over here to home assistant, and we flip that switch a few times, go back over here to node red, you'll see that it was switched on and off, on and off. It sees that everything's going off, and also Puts the last time here in a little um, status underneath. Um, and so now we've got, we can uh, now key off this now. We can say whenever this switch changes, we could do some things off here. Um, all right, so let's take a look at doing something manual. So we're going to pull out an inject node. Uh, we're going to grab a debug node. And then scroll back down here and grab one of these call service nodes. Go ahead and hook those up. And then we're going to double click on the call service and we're going to put in some details here. So we're going to do domain is switch. Uh, entity ID is switch dot bn link underscore one. Now the service we want to call, this depends on basically on the home system docs. Uh, basically, for any switch, we want to use turn on 
or you could use uh, turn off or you could use toggle and I'm just going to use turn on okay and then kind of make that prettier all right so now if I hit the switch it goes through here it, it triggers that turn on call just at this time and then get the output over here, which is still out. Notice it's outputting the timestamp from the from the original input node. So that kind of passes through. It triggers this, but the payload doesn't change. Um, and then you'll see here we got on to so an on. So this state change from on. So we can add We can copy this. Make another one. Change this one to off. And now when I hit that button, we're turning off that switch. So let's say you wanted to turn that switch on every day at 3 p.m. You could um, you could uh, double click this guy and change it to a specific time today. And this this time is in 24 hour time, so three would be 15 uh, every day. And so now at and you want to go ahead and give it a name. You say 3p every day. So now. Every day at three o'clock, it's going to turn on that switch, and you can see so it's got the it's got the little recurring icon there to show you what that's doing. All right, so now that we've got this um, these manual on and offs working, let's play more with this uh, state changed one. So let's throw in a switch here, and we are going to look for. Um, on and off and we'll add these here on hit the add down here and add off so now you've got uh you got your switch and it's doing on and off and now let's have it do something else so let's have it also turn on uh, a light so we're going to do a call service And we're going to add light and turn on. And it's going to be light dot mini one. So now, whenever I turn on this switch, it's also going to turn on this light. Or we can have it turn off the light. All right, so now when I hit the off here, it's going to turn off that light, and it's going to turn on that light. So it's turning on the switch and the light at the same time. It's within milliseconds. of They, they both get the command to turn on. So you can see there it's called turn off on that switch, and that switch registered, so then that watcher here registered off and turned off now what you're looking at here in this flow right here is what you're looking at is basically this is just like yaml um, you've got your trigger you've got your condition and then you've got your action now one of the things I see a lot of people make a mistake with is when you uh, instead of just sending an on/off command to a light, you want to check if the light is on first, and if it is, then turn it off. That's there's no need for that. You sending an on command to a light that's already on does nothing. Sending an off command to a light that's already off does nothing. Home Assistant's not going to care. 
it's just gonna it's gonna send the command the device is just gonna go well I'm already off so I'm not gonna do anything um, so there's no need to like check if something is on and then turn it off I see a lot of people write their flows like that and there's absolutely no need for it um, so you you can you can get the uh, the current state of the node like if you wanted to find out um, what a node is currently doing we can do that um, we'll get the debug here and we'll show you what that looks like we're gonna look at uh, so switch oops VPN. grab this switch here so we'll see what it's doing uh, get rid of this stuff. So you'll see if I click this, it's going to tell you that this current state is currently off. Now, you can actually get more information out of that if you change this complete message object. And I'll show you that. So you actually get all this in, all this data is actually kind of useful. Um, you get its friendly name, its context, uh, when it was triggered, um, time since last change. So how long it's, you know, and that's in JavaScript, uh, millisecond, JavaScript uh, time code. How long it's been since um, it last changed uh, and all this stuff. And you, and you can get that here and, and you can do a lot of useful things with that too. Like you could grab this time and, and say you only want it to be on for 10 minutes. Well, we could do that uh, with a delay note. Um, so let's say, okay, so we turned on this light here. So let's, we manually turn on a light. So let's add a delay of say 20 seconds. All right, let's make it shorter than that, 10 seconds. And then we're gonna turn it off. Get rid of this guy. So now I trigger that, it's gonna turn on. This will go blue, that shows that the delay is currently running. So it turned on the light. It's waiting for the 10 seconds. And there it switched and then it flipped it off. So it turned off the light. Let's see if we can get some more information out of this state changed. Let's change that to complete message object and see what it tells us. Get rid of these guys. So now I'm going to turn off, fire the turn off, fire the turn on, it's going to turn it on. You'll see that now it triggered, it tells you old state and new state. Now these are great because it tells you what the old state was and what the new state is. Um, so you, the old state was off, the old state is on. Now this is great for other things that have numerical values like uh, let's say a brightness or a brightness percentage or uh, watts if you're watching a power monitor switch you watch the watts when the watts are high and, the, and they go from high to a low value then you can um, you can trigger your automation to do something uh, so that makes that that's that makes that really powerful here that the, the old and new states um, in the uh, in the state change object are fantastic for that. Let's take a look at what you can get out of um, out of uh, light bulbs. So if you open up, let's see, let's grab a an inject, and we're going to grab a current state. We're going to change that to light mini two. Grab a debug. Go ahead and clear these. Deploy. You see, it'll just say on. But if you change this to a complete message object, you'll get a lot more information out of it. Usually, uh, include. Okay, here we go. So we get um, the brightness it's on. Uh, RGB color, friendly color name, friendly name, sorry, and uh, a lot of information here that you can mess with. So 
say you wanted to uh, change these art these these colors, you could in a flow you could see read these colors and then change them on the fly. Um, another interesting node would be the uh, wait until node. Um, that's pretty useful if, um, like, if you had like uh, a garage door, um, you would want the garage door to open, and when when the garage door opens, you would want it to turn on, say, the garage light, uh, and then you would use the wait until for the garage door to register as closed, and then you would turn off the light. Um, that's a really powerful node I like a lot. So that's it. This is YouTube, so you know what to do. Click the buttons, or don't. What am I, your mother? <laughs>